Normally when I put together these kinds of critical analysis videos, I prefer to critique actual full games. Over time, I've broadened my focus here on the channel to include games that were in early access, or otherwise in some kind of public beta. The problem with video games gradually shifting towards becoming online evolving experiences where the majority of the game's overall content is slowly trickled out in post-release updates is that over time, the game no longer really is the same product you first reviewed at launch. So it is in that spirit I figured I'd take a more active role in not only covering games, but also DLC and post-launch updates that strike my fancy. And what better place to start than Killing Floor 2? I've been a big fan of Killing Floor as a franchise since I first played Killing Floor 1 back in 2014. When Killing Floor 2 was released in 2016, I was initially a little resistant to make the transition myself. With the sheer amount of substantial post-launch DLC updates Killing Floor 1 got, how likely would it be that Tripwire Interactive could replicate that methodology successfully? Turns out they did a pretty decent job of doing just that. With the newest major game update, Perilous Plunder, now out, I figured it would be the perfect time to dive right back in and have some good old-fashioned fun, blowing out the head of the brain-dead zombie minions that populate the gorgeously bloody world of Killing Floor 2. Killing Floor 2, for those who need a brief recap, is a co-op, wave-based, first-person shooter horde mode zombie game, similar in design to Call of Duty Zombies, although far more fleshed out comparatively. Players fight off increasingly large waves of zombies, referred to in-game as Zeds, until the final wave where they have to face off against a single boss and beat them to win the game. These bosses all have different attack abilities as well as different general strengths and weaknesses. And the game does not tell you in advance which boss you'll ultimately be fighting, so you're forced to kind of just adapt on the fly. It does help that these bosses generally all follow a similar behavior of melee attacking the player for a few seconds, launching a few projectiles, and then running away, before then subsequently calling in a swarm of minions to wear you down before the boss then appears again, and rinse and repeat the cycle until you ultimately kill the guy or girl. I mean, when it comes to the zombie bosses, I mean, all genders are represented equally. Or at least a main two anyway. Players get money from killing zombies in game, which they can then spend in between rounds as a vendor, where they can buy different weapons, sell their existing ones, upgrade their weapons, or restock on ammo or armor. So all that out of the way, let's see what's included in this summer 2020 major update. Firstly, and most notably, the Killing Floor 2 team have added in a new community-made map, Desolation, created by community member Ranger Alpha as a official Killing Floor 2 map. Desolation, of course, you're seeing on screen now. Additionally, a trifecta of new achievements specifically tied to this map have been added. The first being, just like the simulations, unlocked when a player beats Desolation in survival mode on hard or higher difficulty. The second achievement, Firing Range Master, is unlocked when a player completes Desolation in survival mode on the highest difficulty level, Hell on Earth. The third achievement, You Are My Only Hope, can be earned when your team locates and picks up all 10 hidden collectibles on the map. One of the things that becomes very clear about Desolation early on is its mere size. I'm not sure I can go on record claiming Desolation is technically the biggest map ever added to Killing Floor 2, but it definitely has to belong somewhere in the top 5. And yet, despite its massive size, you always get the feeling like there just isn't enough room in a lot of areas. Like you're up against a wall. That feeling is due to a handful of very specific and very excellently crafted design choices, which meld together very well. Top among them, the map is divided into many tight indoor rooms and corridors, with a handful of larger open areas both in the interior and exterior areas of the map. Also, it doesn't help that the spawn period variable that is used to determine when more zombies spawn in and how many spawn in at any particular moment is really low, so prepare to deal with far larger clumps of enemies at any given time compared to what you normally find in any other Killing Floor map. This has the effect of making each round feel like it's going by far faster because you don't have those quieter moments where you're waiting for more zombies to find you. You're almost always still dealing with one group of enemies when another comes running at you. A couple of my favorite areas in the map included the maze-like underground training arena and the degraded plant infused underground corridors that felt like something out of a spin-off SCP type game. You do not want to do what I did and have a one-on-one -on -one fight against a giant enemy bloater in the middle of a narrow corridor where you can't really dodge its acid vomit. While I was recording footage for this video, I jumped on a modded community server that increased the total number of players from the normal cap of 12 to I believe around 64. 
I think we had about 30 or 40 players in the match with me, and the number of enemies was insane. It was likewise scaled to accommodate the unprecedented modified number of players, but even then, we still had a tough go of it. And that's a major credit to both the community map maker and in general to the developers as well. In addition to the new map, Tripwire also added four new weapons to the game. First up, the HRG Kaboomstick, which probably has one of the silliest yet most appropriate names of any weapon in the game. The Kaboom Stick is a modified alternate version of the double barreled shotgun, the double barreled boom stick, except that it fires explosive pellets instead of normal ones. Every shot contains eight pellets with high spread, and each pellet creates a explosion on contact. Alt fire shoots both barrels at once, if loaded, doubling the total amount of explosives. Then we have the HRG Tez Launcher. The HRG Tez Launcher is listed as an alteration of the HM Tech 501 grenade rifle that fires microwave projectiles with its primary fire. It also has an alternate fire mode that launches EMP grenades which explode on contact. Its primary function is to serve in situations where you have to deal with large elite type enemies like berserkers, bloats, sirens, or husks. In addition to these two weapons made available for free, Tripwire Interactive also added two paid weapons locked behind paywalls. The first being the Blunderbuss, a close to medium range firearm that utilizes a flintlock mechanism to fire explosive cannonballs with the primary fire, or cannonball shrapnel with the alt fire. The cannonballs are heavy balls, and they will not explode while a player holds down the primary fire. The cannonball shrapnel has a high spread and each shrapnel can pierce through zombies and bounce off the walls. The second DLC weapon is the Glock 18C, which can be equipped as either a single sidearm or a duo. The single Glock 18C is a fully automatic pistol with two fire modes, single and automatic. The dual variant only fires in full auto mode. Other additions to the game as part of the Perilous Plunder update include one new boss skin, a summer seasonal variant skin for the Matriarch, as well as several limited time only summer objectives, tickets, and cosmetics. Overall, I'd have to say this update is a pretty decent one, nothing spectacular. A single new map is somewhat run of the mill for what players would normally expect, and since it is a community made one, it's not like Tripwire took a lot of effort to package it into this update, but it's still one of the better maps in the game overall, so I'm not too bothered. The 50-50 split between free new weapons and paid new ones is kind of a hard line to take. I don't like locking away gameplay affecting content behind microtransaction paywalls, but since you can enjoy the game perfectly fine without buying it, without experiencing any direct adverse effect from doing so, I'll let it slide for the most part. I was a little disappointed to hear there was no new boss added as part of this seasonal update. Killing Floor 2 is a bit similar to games like Dauntless, where it's really judged by the number of and quality of its NPC bosses. Having less than half a dozen NPC bosses four years into the game game's life cycle is kind of a disappointment. I can only hope at this point that this year's Halloween update brings with it a rather new spooky boss surprise. At any rate, that's all I have to say on this particular update. If you want to play it, Killing Floor 2 is available on Steam. As a game, it's come a long way since it initially debuted back in 2016 as an early access title, but it does seem like there is still a little ways to go in certain areas. Hopefully the game will continue to be expanded upon before Tripwire inevitably releases a third entry in the series sometime within the next year or two. If you've made it to the end of this video, let me know what you think by posting a comment down below. I usually respond to every single comment on this channel, so if you're looking to get a hold of me, that's a surefire way of doing so. If you want to support this channel and what I do, giving this video a like always helps, and if you want to see more similar videos like this in the future, click the subscribe button and also hit that bell to get notified when new videos go live. It's cliche, I know, but it does really help. YouTube seems insistent on trying to screw over every creator in the universe that is that has less than 100k subscribers, and the current workaround seems to be subscribing and hitting the bell so if you want to see more videos like this please 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 do so okay that's enough of me groveling this is warrior dan signing out stay awesome everybody and peace out